Hello and welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be a middle grade book recommendations for boys. So I did a video like this but like for focusing on like books that girls would like many many months ago and I've been wanting to do that but for boys ever since. And I have, this is actually my third time filming this video but like I'm just not, I'm not even going to tell you why like it's just, it just hasn't been working for me. So this is my third attempt. Here we go. I can do this. So if you don't know, I have a little brother. His name is Levi. He's been featured on my channel. He has his own new YouTube channel that I will link down below. Do you know I have a passion for Christian fiction? So I've, you know, done a lot of searching trying to find Christian fiction books that my brother would like. He is 14, but I've been, you know, we've been going through this for like years, so I found a lot of books for him when he was younger. Why let all of that information go to waste? You might have a little brother or a son or, you know, a nephew or a cousin or a friend or even you yourself that you're like, you know, I need more like good book recommendations in my life, specifically like Christian fiction, like inspirational kind of stuff. Like I'm here to help you out today hopefully. So really the books that I'm going to be talking about anybody can read obviously, but it's just like mostly like the other video I did for girls, I was really talking about books that only girls would like and appreciate, but I'm focusing on middle grade like boys, that's what I'm focusing on right now. These happen to all be series, I didn't mean for it to be just series, but like I guess I don't really read standalones that often. I'm coming at you with like dystopian, apocalyptic, sci-fi, fantasy, and even a mystery series, so yeah, let's just get started. So this first series you all saw coming, it's one of my favorites to talk about. That is the Kids Left Behind series by Jerry Jenkins and Tim LaHaye. When I originally read about it, it said it was recommended for ages like 9 to 12, but then I've seen other places where it was for like 10 to 14 or something. I read it first when I was about 12 years old and I think that's when Levi started reading it, so that's what I would recommend it for. Maybe a little younger, uh, it's kind of hard for me sometimes to really know the best age for something. But I kind of lean towards maybe ages 12 and up. But anyway, I'll read you the description from the back of the first book, Taken. It says, Millions of people have been raptured, and those left behind must choose to accept or reject the Savior as they move forward with their lives in the aftermath. Join the young trib force as the world falls apart around them, and they must band together to find faith and fight the evil future that threatens all of humanity. Not much of a description on the back of that one, but yeah. The Kids Left Behind series parallels the Adult Left Behind series, if you've heard of that one, which is like super popular back in the day, so you probably did hear about it. And some of the characters in the Adult series you'll see appear here and there in the Kids series. But this is about four teenagers, Jed, Vicky, Lionel, and Ryan, and the rapture happens, and they're left behind. And now the seven-year tribulation begins. And they join together to survive and learn more about what's coming in the future. There's going to be plagues and earthquakes and the Antichrist and the Mark of the Beast from the time the rapture happens till Jesus comes back at the end. All of these crazy things. It's a series I've always loved. Levi enjoyed it. There are 12 books in the hardback editions, but there's also like the soft cover editions and there's like 40 of them. So yeah, I think they're very interesting, they're exciting, you learn a little bit about Revelation in the Bible and what's coming. Yeah, it's a good series. The next series I'm going to be recommending is Swipe by Evan Engler. Everyone gets the mark. It gives all the benefits of citizenship. Yet if getting the mark is such a good thing, then why does it feel so wrong? Set in a future North America that is struggling to recover after famine and global war, Swipe follows the lives of three kids caught in the middle of a conflict they didn't even know existed. United under a charismatic leader, every citizen of the American Union is required to get the mark on their 13th birthday in order to gain the benefits of a citizen. The mark is a tattoo that must be swiped by special scanners for everything from employment to transportation to shopping. It's almost Logan Langley's 13th birthday, and he knows he should be excited about getting the mark, but he hasn't been able to shake the feeling he's being watched. Not since his sister went to get her mark five years ago, and never came back. When Logan and his friends discover the truth behind the mark, will they ever be able to go back to being normal teenagers? It's labeled as sci-fi, but it's like also kind of like end of the world type thing. Like it's got the mark, so it's kind of like taken that from the Bible. But like the other stuff that happens in the book of Revelation, like... The, the series doesn't really follow that. It just has like the mark aspect and stuff like that. So just so you know, there are four books in the series and the fourth book kind of leaves you hanging and that's also kind of weird and I don't really like that book. But the other three books are very, very good and that's why I'm recommending it. I don't know if a fifth book is ever, like if the series is ever gonna be like really concluded and finished. I 
kind of doubt it at this point. Still a good series, still worth reading, I think. But, I mean, you've been warned, so you can decide if you want to read it or not after hearing that. The next series is The Wing Feather Saga by Andrew Peterson. And Andrew Peterson, fun fact, is also a Christian singer. Once in a cottage above the cliffs on the dark sea of darkness, there lived three children and their trusty dog Nugget. Janner Igaby, his brother Tink, their crippled sister Lily, are gifted children as all children are, loved well by a noble mother and ex-pirate grandfather. But they will need all their gifts and all that love to survive the evil pursuit of the venomous fangs of Dang, who have crossed the dark sea to rule the land with malice and pursue the Igabys who hold the secret to the lost legend and jewels of good King Wingfeather of the Shining Isle of Anira. Andrew Peterson spins a quirky and riveting tale of the Igabys' extraordinary journey from Glipwood's Dragon Day Festival and a secret hidden in the Books and Crannies bookstore, past the terrifying black carriage, clutches of the horned hounds, and loathsome toothy cows surrounding Ankle Jelly Manor, through the Glipwood Forest and mysterious treehouse of Pete the Sock Man, known for a little soft shoe and wearing a tatter tattered socks on his hands and arms, to the very edge of the ice prairies. Full of characters rich in heart, smarts, and courage, on the edge of the dark sea of darkness presents a world of wonder and a tale children of all ages will cherish. Families can read aloud and readers groups are sure to discuss for its layers of meaning about life's true treasure and tangle of the beautiful and horrible, temporal and eternal, and good and bad. It's not my typical type of book that I would read, but it was still very just like entertaining and fun and quirky and just like very different. It's just fun and so I recommend it. The next series is Robot Wars by Sigmund Brewer. Set in an experimental community on Mars in the year 2039, the Robot Wars series features 14-year-old virtual reality specialist Tice Sanders. Life on the Red Planet is not always easy, but it's definitely exciting. Tice finds that the mysteries of the planet point to his greatest discovery, a new relationship with God. He talks about his growing faith and curiosity in a manner that kids can relate to as they are probably wondering some of the same things. So in one book, the Mars Project is in trouble and only Tice holds the key. In another adventure, Tice has discovered there may be killer aliens on the loose, um, etc. Just stuff like that. And his life on Mars. And I only read the first book in the series before I handed it off to Levi and he read the entire series and loved it. I think he read it when he was like 10 or 11 years old. Just like a good solid Christian sci-fi series it seemed to me. So if you're into like sci-fi and stuff like this is for you. You need to check it out. This next series you should have seen coming also. The Kingdom series by Chuck Black. Have to recommend this one. It's medieval fantasy. I love this series so much. Good and Evil Clash. Leonard and Cedric are determined to not only survive but claim hope and victory. In Kingdom's Dawn, Leonard and Tess, along with all the king's people, must escape slavery by the powerful Lord of Pharos. Kingdom's Hope, uh, spoilers, that one. Too. After many years, Kingdom's Edge finds Cedric living in a hopeless life until a stranger appears with powerful words of a new kingdom and a grand army. Finally, Kingdom's Reign marches you through the danger of Earth's last days as the evil Dark Knight threatens to defeat the prince once and for all. Swords, knights, and battles to find these captivating tales that parallel biblical events from Genesis to Revelation. So it's an allegorical, like, medieval fantasy. Like, can you get much better than that? The books also in the back, this is something that I really appreciate. They have, like, discussion questions, as a lot of books do, but it also has, like, questions and then, like, also answers that kind of will ask you questions along the way to make sure that, like, you're following the parallels to the Bible and you see all the symbolism and who the characters represent and stuff, which I think is fun and interesting and kind of, if you don't catch on, you can like, you know, look at that and it like helps you along. And I just think that's a, just an added interesting thing about these books. If you like fantasy, I highly, highly, highly recommend this series. It is really, really good. So obviously the next series I have to tell you about is the Knights of Arethrae series, which is a spin-off series of the Kingdom series. Also six books, and instead of being like allegories of like straight from the Bible, it presents biblical principles allegorically. Each book teaches about virtues and vices conveyed through the truth of God's word. I love the series. I like it probably even better than the Kingdom series. I just love them so, so much and they're just like really, really good and you need to read them. So the next series is Prince Warriors by Priscilla Shara. As brothers, Xavier and Evan are used to battling each other, but now they're discovering that there's a much bigger battle going on all around them and it's their turn to fight. The Prince Warriors is the first book in Priscilla Shara's new epic new series that brings to life the invisible struggle ensuing in the spiritual realm. 
Xavier, Evan, and their friends have typical lives until they enter a mysterious land called Aharitos. There they meet their guide, Ruach, who offers wisdom and direction as the kids' initial adventure begins. An adventure filled with armor and danger and a very real enemy. So again, this is a book that I only read book one of, but Levi read two or three of the books in the series uh, several years ago. So I don't remember a whole lot about it, just the main kind of thing about it being kind of like the spiritual realm and the armor of God and stuff like that. And I remember it be seeming like a really like solid like Christian series. I highly recommend that one if you're into fantasy. The next series recommendation is The Quest for Truth by Brock Eastman. This is a series both me and Levi read the entire series. I, as an adult, really enjoyed it. Ignore any mispronunciations of anything. I'm doing my best. Five, four, three, two, one. We're out of here. Suit up, jump into hyperflight with the four wit kids. Forced into a high stakes hunt for their missing parents by the sinister Captain Vedrick, the siblings' only hope is their parents' Archaeos e journal. Can Tiffany decipher the clues within it? As time runs out, it's all up to Oliver and his Federation training to fly the Phoenix and protect his crew. But twins, Mason and Austin, endanger the mission when they unexpectedly meet the Blue Boy. The Quest for Truth series unfolds as the four Wit Kids are thrust into a desperate race to find the mysterious planet Ursprung and stop the Ubel Renegades from misusing its long-lost secrets. Ancient cities, treacherous villains, high-tech gadgets, the Phoenix, encounter all of these and more on this futuristic interplanetary adventure. So yeah, I thought it was a very fun series. Mainly just like about a bunch of siblings are the main characters and I think that's a really fun uh, thing to it and I really enjoyed that aspect of it. I thought it was a very good series and I enjoyed it a lot. This next series... I'm almost like not sure if I should include it just because all of these other series I've read at least one book in the series so I feel like I can like recommend it. This one I've actually never read any of the books in the series it's just one that Levi read several books in the series and he really liked it and it's by Jeremy Jenkins and Chris Fabry which are authors in the Left Behind Kids series which I really love and recommend so I kind of feel safe recommending this and it's a Christian series so I'm going to go ahead and recommend it. But I also haven't, I kind of, I don't know. But I feel safe recommending it because, yeah, like it's a Christian series written by authors that I'm familiar with and Levi read it and really, really liked it. Anyway, it's the Red Rock Mysteries by, again, Jerry Jenkins and Chris Fabry. Watch out. The Timberland twins are on the loose. Bryce and Ashley are ATV riding tweens from Colorado who unearth action-packed mystery and adventure wherever they go. From clearing the name of the local miscreant to thwarting a gold-stealing heist, the twins' growing faith and the strong example of their parents guide them through even the most life-threatening situations. With the trademark page-turner style used by Jerry Jenkins and Chris Fabry in the Left Behind the Kids series, these fast-paced books will keep e even reluctant readers on the edge of their seats. Readers will definitely get hooked by the unbelievable cliffhanger at the end of book one, Haunted Waters. Perfect for ages 8 through 12. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and recommend this one. Like, it sounds like a good series. Leva really liked it. So yeah. And I don't think this video would be complete without lastly recommending the Narnia series. Like you didn't think I was going to go through this and not recommend that series. Like you probably know about the series, you've probably read it or watched the movies or whatever, but like I'm putting it in here. Narnia, the land beyond the wardrobe door, a secret place frozen in eternal winter, a magical country waiting to be set free. Lucy is the first to find the secret of the wardrobe in the professor's mysterious old house. At first, her brothers and sisters don't believe her when she tells of her visit to the land of Narnia. But soon Edmund, then Peter and Susan, step through the wardrobe themselves. In Narnia, they find a country buried under the evil enchantment of the White Witch. When they meet the lion Aslan, they realize they've been called to a great adventure and bravely join the battle to free Narnia from the witch's sinister spell. I grew up watching the movies and loved them and read the books recently and like... I'm a little, I lean towards the movies more, I, that's what I really enjoy, but the books are still, I mean, I still was entertained by them. I can't get Levi to read them, but he loves the movies. If he was younger, I think I could have gotten him to read them and he would have really liked them. So yes, that should be all 10 series. I know there's more books out there, these are just the ones that I know of and recommend. If I ever discover more in the future, I will make a part two. But for now, this is what I got. So I hope that it was helpful. I hope you added some new books to your TBR. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in my next Bookish Ramblings video. Bye!